Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I want to talk to you guys today about the struts how. Um, basically, that translates into a plunging strike. Um, and basically, the idea with this is that basically you're here and you're basically you're as you attack, okay, you're angling the sword down. Okay, so so you're here, right? You're out of range. You come in to attack, okay, and you're angling the sword down. Now, a lot of people interpret this to basically mean that you're turning the sword blade over okay and attacking with the with the with the false edge um now if i do it down here low like yeah if i do it down here i can see how that definitely gives me an angle you know versus like here i'd have to raise my arm up but if i'm trying to come over the top over the top of somebody's buckler or over the top of somebody's shield um i don't see that much of of a difference whether I use the false edge or the or the true edge, um, and, and what I find from my sparring is that if you try to do it with the false edge, there's a good chance that you're going to hit flat. Uh, whereas with the true edge, you know I can pretty much hit that almost every time with the with the true edge. Okay, and and, and I'm you know part of it is because I'm not really trying to turn the sword over. I mean the sword just naturally goes. Okay. And, and like I said, you, you're pretty much gaining almost the same angle as if you were trying to turn your hand over. So um, I, I kind of disagree with the interpretation that I've seen from a lot of people. Now, it does make sense if you're going to thrust through. Because basically, let's say I make a cut, all right? And now basically, let's say the guy's stepping back. Yeah, it makes sense to turn the sword over and try to change that angle, okay? Uh, so it does, it does make sense, you know, if, you, if you're going to try and thrust through, um, you know, especially, I mean, now obviously, I'm assuming that the guy is really bringing his guard up, you know, so so I'm using the most extreme angle here. Um, if, if we do it, you know, let's say, if we're doing it here, you know, um, you, you can see that, you know, thrusting through definitely gives you an advantage. But if you're going to just make the cut, you know, I can pretty much hit that same angle with the true edge just by loosening up a little bit on, on the on the fingers in the back here okay okay uh, and, and this is a strike that you know I, i've been using this strike for years um you know usually in the uh you know when i fight you know i, I usually refer, refer to it as a moline or some type of a rotational cut um you know because the, the way i'll typically use the strike is i'll throw some type of an offside or a zwerch out to the left right and then from there i'll rotate it up okay or, or i'll throw let's say a you know you know to under the armpit and then from there turn it over uh, into a high strike okay now the uh, you know, let's talk about the power generation okay um, now in the historical manuals that I've seen uh, there's there's plenty of uh, there's at least two images where I've seen that people are demonstrating this type of a cut uh, and in two of the images uh, they were basically wearing a male armor Okay, so they're wearing male. So given that they're wearing male, the strikes would have to be hard enough uh, to be able to, you know, because you're not going to cut through male, but they have to be hard enough to, you know, it, it, you know, break bone or, or cause severe bruising through male. Okay, so that means that, that there has to be some significant power generation. So basically the way we're going to generate power, like if we're, if we're cutting, let's say we're doing a cut to the right side, okay, basically we're bringing our hip into the blow. Uh, if we're going to the left side, again, we can also bring the hip into the blow, okay? Or or we can do a rotational cut, okay? So if we do a some type of rotation, that's also gonna generate power. So, so we're either bringing our hip in, bringing our hip in, okay? Or rotating, okay? Or we can also step into our blow, okay? So if I'm stepping into my blow, that's also gonna generate more power, okay? So I can do it from, Okay, um, so the same thing goes with this type of a cut. There has to be some type of a power generation. So what's your power generation? Um, well, obviously we can, you know, you, you can step in and get that, get that angle, right? So that's one way you can get that power. But uh, another, in this particular uh, uh, cut, um, one of the things that you can use is your lat muscles, okay? Uh, your lat muscles, which basically go from here down to here on the side. They're basically designed 
so that you can lift your entire body weight. Okay, when you do chit, when you do like pull-ups, those are the muscles that you're using. Um, so, so basically, a lot of times, if I go, let's say, from a cut here, all right, to turning it over and striking over the top, right? I'm using this muscle. That's what's pulling down and turning the sword over. So I'll do it from this side so you can see it. So there's a deep cut, right? And then from there, I'll flip the sword over, okay? And make that molone or that plunging strike, okay? Okay, you can see how that, this is the muscle that's powering that cut, okay? Um, so, so, so that's how I think that this cut, this plunging strike, this struts how makes more sense uh, to do it with the true edge, um, you know, unless you're turning it into a thrust. Because right? if basically, if, if, if let's say I meet you here, okay, and then that makes a little, you know, with the thrust, it kind of makes a little bit more sense, especially if, I, if you're backing up and I'm chasing you. I can see that working with a, um, um, you know, I can't see it, that, you know, I can't see turning this over uh, into a thrust. The only reason why I think that makes sense, whereas with the cut, it does not. Um, because if I make this cut, and let's say I'm turning it over, okay, my hands are, my fingers are pointed up, as opposed to if I make the cut, and you know, if I use a true edge, my thumb is on top of the grip. If there's any incoming blow from the top, um, you can expect that your opponent is going to raise his guard up, okay? So basically, they're gonna either lift their buckler up, or they're gonna lift their shield up, okay? So as they come up and they meet your sword, um, if you're flipping this over, and basically, especially if you're stretched out, and basically you loosen up a little bit on your grip to try and get a little bit more angle, um, if they come up hard, they, they, there's a good chance they're just gonna knock the sword out of your hand. Whereas if you use the true edge, and you make that cut, okay, if they come up and they hit it, uh, because your thumb is wrapped around the top, there, there's less of a uh, there's less of a chance that they're gonna that they're gonna knock you know the sword out of your hand. Okay, so now one of the things I want you guys to know, I'm not against false edge cuts. Okay, uh, I use false edge cuts all the time. You know, I, I I mean I use them at a distance. You know, I, I use them at you know in close. You know, high, low, but uh, that makes sense because with the with the you know when I, if I'm doing a false edge cut, I'm really gaining a a major. Uh, advantage as far as angle okay I'm really you know that's really giving me a lot more reach okay so it makes sense to do it there uh, also I got my hand completely my thumb and my fingers completely wrapped around the uh, the uh, the grip um, so so again that makes sense the sword is not going to get knocked out of my hand as if I did it up high and turned the sword over and somebody comes up and hits it uh, you know because I'm stretched out and I got a weak grip, that's gonna tend to knock the sword uh, out of my hand, okay? Um, so there are some thoughts on this uh, struts how, which I find very interesting. Uh, I've, been, I've been using this for, see, I study both, both HEMA and I also do SCA fighting, and uh, it's, it's interesting how like a, a, you know, I've been using this rotational cut, you know, you know in the SCA we call it a Moline, right? Any, any of these cuts, they call Molinets. Um, you know, it basically it's a rotational cut, okay? Bring it there, bring it there, bring it to the leg. So there's a lot of places where I can go with that rotational cut. So I'm, I'm using this all the time. Um, and I, I was looking at the, at the fighting, you know, basically I saw a video on the struts how, and I saw the, the images in the, um, you know, some of the historical images, uh, and, and the way that the, um, the hand was positioned where it looked like it was basically, you know, pretty much the same as when I do my, my high Molone over here. And I said, that's very interesting because that's that's probably the same cut we've been doing for years. Um, so there are my thoughts on the struts how, uh, the, the plunging strike. If you guys have any comments, please post them. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'll talk to you guys next time.